All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have a big one for you today. Grand Horvath, come back on the channel. This guy has had a run in the last like six to eight months like you've never seen and I'm so excited and there's so much I want to talk to him about and so much I'm curious on and we're going to ask all the questions. So sit back, relax, enjoy. There he is. Oh, you're already rolling, dude. Already rolling. Are you kidding Holy. me, man? I can't miss a second with you. Every second oh, I got with Grant is a good I joined, second. I hear recording in process. <laughs> yeah, dude, I've made the mistake so many times of like hopping on with a buddy and like you chat for like five, ten minutes and you just catch up on life. And then I'm like, man, I just have to ask you all of that again on camera. So I'm like, let's just dive right in. Dude, it's funny you talk about that because when when I like film with Bob and stuff, they roll like the entire time. Like jets just rolling, they got all the cameras rolling. It never turns it off. Like yeah. it's like an entire, it, it just never stops. Like they never yes. press. It's never a great, it's a great strategy, man. Cause if you've made the mistake one time of like allowing a moment to pass you by and you just can't really bring it up naturally, you know what I mean? You're like, I gotta, I gotta oh, get yeah. everything. How did they get dude, the garage and, clip without that? Joey hitting his oh, head yeah. on the garage we, door. Dude, we've had, exactly. I mean, <laughs> we've had so many moments where it's like, you say something so funny and it wasn't recording or you're yeah. just like not rolling and you get so mad but yeah it's the end of the world dude how are you doing man? The, first off to you congrats on the apparel deal you're decked out you're looking good thanks man thanks yeah it's kind of wild Thank man you. it's kind of wild started this channel yeah. talking about you and good good and that whole situation and the and and the youtube golf community and yeah now the i don't know it feels surreal for sure yeah well, I'm happy for you, dude. It's crazy because I remember coming on like right when you started. Yeah. Way back. Yeah, dude. Um, and just and you stuck with it, dude. Like that was one thing that I noticed because I feel like there was you know a couple other people that maybe tried, and there are some other really good um, places to find like YouTube golf news and stuff. I just think you stuck with it super super hard, and thumbnails were really good, and you got some some really catchy stuff. So. It's really it's impressive man dude thank you no i mean i definitely i appreciate that a lot from you too because yeah you were like the first one to kind of come on and like it's almost like a little legit stamp every time i kind of had like a creator either like dm or message or especially come on the channel man so i really appreciate that too because i think that's a huge part of it is like the acceptance from you guys in the community is like unbelievably mind-blowing but i think it also helps it a boatload you know what i mean um right so yeah no i appreciate it man i appreciate it but dude enough about me this is about you how are you doing man you have had one of i mean the reason why i want to talk to you is like you've just had one of the coolest journeys in the last like eight months and there's so much that has happened and i bet you it feels like you've been living in a tornado so like just let's just start how you been how you been dude it's good. Everything's good, man. Life is good. Um, living back here in Florida, it's kind of, it's taken my mind necessary. I mean, I feel like it's taken my mind a little bit off of just YouTube. And now I have things that, you know, outside of YouTube, because I love the ocean so much, diving and fishing. And I've just been doing that so much. And I've been playing so much more golf off camera, which is something I was never like, I mean, I remember just always filming, 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 and I, I never really took breaks. So now I just feel like I, I really do, you know, play more golf off camera just with my friends here in Florida. So that's good. But yeah, and everything's been, it's been crazy. Yeah, dude, it's, it's a, it's been a crazy journey to watch. And it's been so cool. But like, I mean, you've always been a super likable guy, but I think you've turned into like the most likable creator on the platform. Do you feel that? I feel like everyone just loves you. Like all the audience but also like the way you've kind of taken the audience with you on this journey and been so open and honest it's been really cool to see and you've kind of had this natural evolution but even like every big creator man in a time of like who knows what you're just the likable guy everyone loves grant i love it <laughs> but it's been, it's been cool to watch how's it been like collaborating with all these different channels and doing all these different things it's been like it's been a lot going on in the last few months for you yeah it's i mean i've really I guess with like my channel now, I've put a lot more focus into like every single video that I'm posting. So just like, I kind of used to just like throw videos up with no thought, just roll the camera, you know, just go out and film around. Um, I feel like now it's become like we step back, you know, me and Skylar, 
Um, and we really, we really like think about, you know, the concept of the video before we even film it. And that's been like, I don't know, just kind of focusing a little bit more on everything and starting to really dial it in. And it's, it's been good. Dude, I give you your flowers all the time on my channel because like, I legitimately believe you're like one of the best YouTubers in the golf world, like actual people who like understand how the platform works. And a huge part of that, man, is exactly what you just said. It's like, it is so easy in a niche like golf to just be like, well, I'll just go film around a golf and the story will uncover itself, which like sometimes it does. But a lot of the time, man, the vi the, like, I feel like you haven't missed in like 10 videos. Like every one I've seen you upload and I've just been like, that's a great idea. Like that's a great concept. Like even if it is just you playing around golf, like the the being able to put a spin on it, an idea behind it, like taking advantage of the lost club tailor made thing. I wanted to give you a hug. That was the best like use yeah. of a crappy situation I've ever seen in my life. That was genius. And I'm like, this guy gets it. Like, and what that means is like you're putting in the time and the effort to think about your audience, to think about what people want to watch, to think about what entertains people. And that just in turn creates better videos, man. And you have been yeah. slaying the content recently. It's funny that you, you said, because right now I'm ripping the hardest 10 of my life. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> oh, no. no, no, I'm just messing. But now I mean, the last video wasn't the greatest, but like, see, now it's like we go yeah. back, we, we rethink yeah. like, what we could have mm -hmm. done better, how we could have done it different, all that. But dude, it's, it's YouTube is like such a, it's such an interesting game because there's so much to it. Mm -hmm. And I have um, Chandler from Mr. Beast. Yeah, He's coming out. He's going to be here that's, in a couple of days. That's um, so we're cool. going to film a lot together. But I think what I'm really excited is to just learn from him. You know, yeah, I'm going to pick his brain for sure. I'm going to ask him a little bit. You know, I don't know how much he's going to tell me. But, yeah, you know, when I watch the Mr. Beast podcast and like mm -hmm. Mr. Beast talks about how he could start any channel and be successful because mm -hmm. he just knows so much more than everyone. That yep. to me is like super intriguing because it's like, what does he know that like everyone else doesn't? Dude, um, totally. Yeah, for sure. Well, and it's such a learning game too because like it's so funny you even say that because like right before I started this channel in December, I was at a Christmas party and someone asked me, like a buddy asked me, he's like, hey, because I was having a CrossFit channel at the time. He's like, if you were to start a new channel or if you had to start from zero again, do you think you could do it again? Do you think you could build up to 20,000 subscribers again? And I was literally like, yeah, for sure. I could do it and I would do it faster because like I just, I spent the last five years studying YouTube and then happenstance, I start this channel and it happens, you know? And like, it's just, there is a knowledge to the platform. And like, if you spend the time studying it and to me, the value of collaborating with Chandler for you is like, Will he have the biggest pull ever for videos? I don't know, maybe, but I don't know how big the golf audience knows him. But dude, the amount you can learn from that guy is going to be, that's, that is so, so valuable. You know, right. that's going to be so cool to hear. Yeah, no, and, and like he started doing some golf content now. He's really into golf, which is cool. And it's just crazy. Like the following he has is wild. So yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. I know he's coming out for couple days here but yeah it's crazy yeah dude that's insane all right speaking of golf collaborations i have to ask when are we getting the gh and the gc the ultimate blue ball tees in youtube history can you give me anything you don't have to tell me exact i know you probably can't but is there anything you can offer the people because everyone is commenting on yeah, everything no, i mean right no. right before we go massive shout out to a sponsor of this channel you guys know them birdie supply co maker of some of the best towels in the world. I got news for you. They're going through a little bit of a rebrand right now. They're converting over. They have some old inventory they're trying to push. He texts Chris, Chris, the owner, known by name, nice guy. He texted me last night being like, hey, let's do a promotion. And I said, sure, what's that promotion gonna be? Thinking it was gonna be, you know, a BOGO, a buy one, get one free. You're not gonna believe what I'm about to tell you. Right now, birdiesupplygo.com on the website for $30, $30, you place an order, $30, it's called the Edwardson package or something like that, first thing on their website, link below, $30. You're gonna get five boxes of golf balls and 10 bags of golf tees for $30. You can't buy a box of golf balls for $30. That's the cheapest box of golf balls at the golf, and you're gonna get five boxes of golf balls and 10 bags of golf tees. Now, I promoted this on my Instagram story last night. I got a text from Chris in the morning saying they're already almost half sold out for my measly little Instagram following. So you know, if you're not on your phone right now, please don't exit this video because it hurts YouTube, but if you're not on your phone right now, go into the website, birdiesupplyco.com, 
and checking out, it's gonna sell out in 10 minutes. This is gonna be sold out before you know it because it's the most incredible deal in the history of golf. They're doing an amazing thing for our audience. Take advantage of it, it's awesome. <laughs> no, Garrett and I, we still talk and, yeah. and we actually played golf like, I think it was three weeks ago now. I'm well aware that you played golf, Grant Horvath. I'm well aware that you do play yeah, golf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we played golf like, yeah, three weeks ago in Texas and we had a great time. And yeah, you know, I think it's going to happen down the road. Um, I'm not sure when, but we still talk and, you know, I would love to. I think I think it'd be a super fun video and like it was really fun to play with Garrett. He's actually swinging really good right now. Um, his, his golf game is solid. I, he like he improved. I know he's been taking lessons with um, Cameron McCormick and they got his swing really good. So I'm really impressed by his game right now. And yeah, I would, I would love to, um, I think, I think we will not too yeah. long. Now. And we'll film that. a video probably too. So that'd be cool. Yeah. 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 I love that, man. I love that. I think it's cool too, because you guys have always had such great chemistry, like that California series. I feel like you and I have talked about that before. Like you guys on camera chemistry is like awesome anyway. So despite the fact that like you're holding in your hands, the most viral YouTube golf video of all time. And you're just, you just, it's there, it's a little burden. You're just kind of nurturing it. And you're just, you know, whenever you're ready, you're just going to let it fly. And it's going to be a one to 10. And it's going to be a one to 10 for your next 10 videos. But it's also the fact that you guys just have great chemistry and your videos together have always been very naturally entertaining. So yeah, the long drive series was, that was one of my favorite. That was, that was pretty cool. Um, that seemed to come together really good. And, you know, Ryder, Ryder, so talented too with with his editing that he made it come to life it was just it was awesome i don't know i don't think we like went into that expecting it to necessarily do as well either we kind of were just like a road trip and i remember kind of planning out with garrett and we did it and it just bang and like looking back it's crazy because like when you're in the moment you're filming it you don't know how necessarily i mean there's some videos you know that are going to bang but we didn't know it was going to do that well i don't think uh maybe garrett did but yeah it's crazy yeah, it had a great storytelling aspect to it too. I think like you could you followed along the journey, and there was like you know a path that you were going, and people were kind of tuned into. So I think that's also part of it. But yeah, you guys are great on camera. But again, speaking of collaborations, there's been a lot of massive ones happening, specifically the YouTube Golf Championships. Talk to me about how that came to be, and kind of like what I mean. You had like a what was it, one point seven million views or something crazy, or one million views on yours and then another almost like 700,000. So 1.7 million views combined between the two so far. That's wild. Yeah. Um, so the YouTube championship, that was, it's funny. So Skylar and I, which is my videographer, it was kind of his idea, which was, this was like, this is right when I signed with TaylorMade. Um, we had this idea, we sat down and we're like, what do people love in YouTube golf? And we kind of narrowed it down to a couple of things. They love, they love like the majors. They loved, you know, good, good majors. People absolutely went crazy over the 18 hole stroke play kind of serious golf. Um, so we're like, what can we do to do an 18 hole stroke play, bring people in. Um, and we just kind of like, we're brains were just clicking. And I remember just thinking of like, if we had Bob and Joey to commentate, um, the YouTube championship, well, we just got it like six of us didn't matter. And we got six of us to go head to head that are all super close in skill level. So no strokes, no handicaps, none of that. Bob and Joey commentate. They're adding like a funny side to it. Uh, we're all serious over there grinding it out. I thought it was like a perfect storm and it came together. The first one so well, Bob, Bob and Joey didn't make it for, for the other one. They're busy, but yeah, hopefully, I mean, hopefully they'll be able to make it for some of them, but um, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It just, it felt back then when we were in California thinking of the idea, it just felt so, so perfect. And I'm like, we got to make this happen because people love the 18 hole stroke play, the tournament golf, the seriousness. There's something about that. Yeah, absolutely. It taps into something that's just like intrinsically interesting, which is like of all of these creators who play golf on camera, just like all these professional golfers who you watch play in tournaments, if they all played together at one time, who's the best or who's going to win? You know, and that's like the majors in actual golf and that's in YouTube. It's like these big collaborative tournaments. And I think it's definitely, I mean, it's, there's something more interesting about watching those throughout. I can't really put my finger on it, but like 
genuinely watching all 18 holes from all people. They're like hours long and I'm sitting there watching like every single shot. Whereas like, you know, sometimes you kind of skip through, sometimes you kind of whatever. But yeah, they were very interesting. Like there was something about them that was just like very kept you locked in, you know? Yeah. And like, and the idea behind the, like the YouTube championship was, well, it's funny that name, the YouTube championship, I'll just put that out there. That name was thought about on the T box as we were filming the first one. Us, we were all standing in the standing together on the T box. Like, what do we call this thing? Like YouTube stroke play tournament. Like we don't know what to call it. So we just threw out a name and it actually it clicked. So, um, but the idea behind that whole tournament too was like it's gonna we wanted everybody to be incentivized that they're gonna get a video and they get to host a location so you know we've done me and micah so far we still need to do the brian rose and busta jack um so like mason and cole they wanted they were thinking about doing it at blue jack nationals which is like an insane golf course um so it's like each person kind of picks out their location. Hopefully the Brian bros can do it at their, their course, but I don't think it's going to be done in time, but that was kind of the idea. It's like everybody kind of supports each other through each tournament. So you fly out to your, to your, your friends tournaments or your creators and um, you support them. And then when it's your turn, you get your big video. So that was kind of the idea behind it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I love the way they turned out. I think they're pretty cool. They super fire, dude. What's your take on like the idea of like actual like organized third party organized YouTube golf tournaments? Do you think they can be successful? Like in terms of like YouTube golf tournaments for YouTubers? Or do you think there's always going to be kind of, you know, schedule conflicts here, there, this business interests here, there, this kind of thing that get in the way? I mean, yeah, it's, I think it could. I mean, I don't know how it would work. I mean, it would have to be a big enough company. I feel like, especially to get everyone like Rick and, and good, good and, and everyone together. Um, I feel like there'd have to be a lot of money involved too. They're, Cause it's like, if they're going to be taking the video, it's like, you guys, you got the other big channels like Rick and good, good that aren't gonna, you know, it's just, it's hard to like make that work, but I, I don't, I'm not saying it couldn't, but I, I know Rick was talking about, hosting his own tournament um but i haven't heard much about that since so uh -oh. <laughs> Zero. Uh, i mean no it's hard like it, it's really <laughs> tough like, everyone's like my schedule these next couple of months is literally like slammed so yeah. i can just imagine what like what everyone else's schedule looks like totally totally what is uh, speaking of schedule are you still going to the uk is that so plan? it's dude it it's funny because i I wanted to do that. Like the open qualifier was kind of all scheduled yeah. and we didn't find a videographer in time. It was actually our fault. And they're <laughs> yeah, like, we're not, we're not gonna be able to do it this year. So oh, I kind of okay. like, dang, because the last video I posted actually at first cell farms yep. was supposed to be like prep for the open for like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like gotcha. that was the idea of the video. Gotcha. Was like I'm prepping for a major. Um, obviously, it, it fell through, so I had to go a whole different route with the video. But yeah, like I was supposed to go out to the UK, qualify, yep. try and qualify for the Open. Uh, but I'll do it next year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it next year for sure. Dude, speaking of game, your game's been on point recently. Like your game has been so solid. I don't think I've seen you hit a bad shot in 400 videos. Like it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, it feels, it does feel good. I think, I think two things like really helped. Um, one was the arm lock putter. I think that's helped a good bit. Uh, I don't think it's like absolutely game changing. I think I've had really good putting. Like I had a lot of good putting rounds without an arm lock. So I think it's maybe made my putting a little more consistent within like the 10 to five foot range. But, and the other thing is I, instead of playing like blades, I went to like the P770s, uh, which is a little bit thicker. So I kind of just like went to a thicker iron, started using the arm lock, and it's just it's a little bit more consistent. But yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. No, yeah, it's it's fun to watch, man. You're definitely like if I was to bet on like like an amount of money that I couldn't afford to lose on someone to just like shoot a 72 or better, that would be you. You'd be like my like for sure. It's a lock. Like I'm not worried about it. 72. I feel like that's yeah. just you're just always there. You know, you're never shooting like an 80. 
and you have the ability to shoot like a 68, a 64, and whatever, you know what I mean? Like really get down there too, which is cool, but it's like steady Eddie over here. I appreciate it, man. It's a, yeah, I just, I feel like that only can't, that only came from just like playing so much tournament golf um, and just learning how to like stay in the round. Cause the more tournaments you play, the more you get embarrassed, you start to just like, you start to care a little less about every little shot. So um, yeah, I just, I guess it's mindset when it comes to consistency. 69 in your first tournament round is absolutely insane. Three under par. Is that something you're going to do more of? Professional tournament too, make sure I say that correctly. Yeah, so that was crazy. Um, so that that video, which just from like a performance standpoint was pretty cool. Like people liked it, which I didn't know they were going to like it that much. Um, so for sure, I mean, down down the road, I, I do want to um, maybe enter another another tournament. I'm not going to do it a ton. It's not really like, it's not really my thing <laughs> to do. It's just, I like it. Like, I think it was fun with Henry. I had my, one of my best friends catting for me. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. I'll, I'll probably do a couple more down the road. Mm -hmm. Not a ton yeah, though. No. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. As long as it's fun for you. I think that's a big thing. I think you've learned with content, like it has to stay fun. If as soon as it starts becoming something you're forcing just for content and feeling like work, then it all starts to just go downhill anyway. So I feel like you right. got a, a good And it's just it. like, you know, sprinkling it in here and there. Yeah. I might have to enter another one and hopefully I play as well as I did because that last tournament was crazy. If, if I putted good, um, it would have been, it was crazy because after like, six holes henry took a screenshot he didn't show me but we were tired <laughs> first and yeah man i had it going man i was ready and i like three holes in a row i remember just missing like five footers for birdie and yeah. i'm like dude that's the difference you know the yeah. guy that wins makes all those yeah 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 dude so. speaking of youtube golfers that are hot george bryant holy crap he's been uh, he's been on dude, he's, a, he's insane at golf like george really because i've played a lot with wesley and george wesley is the best putter i've ever played with in my yeah. life wedge player i've never seen anything like it but yeah um george from just a ball striking and just like absolutely pure in shots i mean you can go on the range at a pga tour event and if you watch a george <laughs> hit and you watch all the rest of the guys hit and george is over there striking it maybe even better than all these like pros it's crazy because mm -hmm. we just played in the uh John Deere Classic Pro Am, which that's okay. coming out this week, um, and I just remember like walking down the range, watching everyone, yeah. all the guys in the John Deere Classic, and George is over there taking just <laughs> dollar bill divots, just <laughs> flushing them. And I'm like, dude, I he really, I think he will go on. I think he will make it into a tour event. I'm kind of calling it right now. Yeah, I think he's that good right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't have that comparison perspective as you do, but as far as watching him from the perspective I've seen, uh, like 100% the best YouTube golfer, if you can even call him that. Like he is just, yeah. he is so, he's like, uh, it is, it does just sound different. It looks different when he hits the golf ball. You know, even on camera, you can pick it up. You're like, what the heck is happening, you know? Yeah, it was funny. Me and Wesley got into it on the range because I'm like, I'm like, George is the number one, youtube golfer and wesley like looked over at me and he's like what about me and i'm like wes you're not a youtube golfer. yeah no exactly tour. he like wanted to be a youtube golfer <laughs> bro but you know what's so funny is that like he comments on so many of my videos and like oh, yeah. it's my favorite thing ever now but like i'm he like he loves he's wesley loves all that stuff he's the funniest <laughs> dude he'll go in and comment back to people like, yeah anyone. he just doesn't care <laughs> Dude, it's so like, funny. It's like the most surprising thing ever. And he comments just like the most like normal comments. Like he's not trying to be like, hey, look at me. I'm Wesley from Brian Bros. He's just like tossing a comment in there here and there. Like just a normal dude in the comment section. I'm like, what the frick is going on right now? <laughs> I'm like, why are you why are you watching my videos? And why are you commenting? Like, oh, yeah. this is wild. He loves it, man. He loves it. How do you, so with all of the collaborative content and all that, but then also all of your like stroke play, which I know you love like 18 hole stroke play type content. Do you have like a formula in your head about the breakdown? Are you trying to do one more than the other or are you just kind of letting the videos flow if you have a good idea? Yeah, I mean, so I have a series I'm starting, which is going to be coming out pretty soon. Like I know we start a lot of series and they never 
tend to like my course review series was one that kind of fizzled out just because it was so hard to film and it took so much like just so much editing and so much thought it was just too much for the brain but um yeah i i think the biggest thing with um you know content and like spreading it out and stuff like right now we have the 2v2 series with george and i which we have some really like george george knows a lot of the pga tour pros so he's just like messaging them and they're like i'm in so we're like dang this is, like we got some coming up in like a month from now that are going to be pretty wild some some really good collabs i know he was talking to like joaquin neiman and like some some really cool players i was just like this is awesome so I'm letting George just run with the two V twos. I have a couple people I've tried to set up, but um, yeah, it's like you have your your content each month that you kind of rely on, which are like your your series. I'm starting this one coming up, and then like you just sprinkle in other ideas and things that just pop up. Like I'm like Chandler coming out. Like I hope you know. I hope we can do like a a match, a nine hole match. I think that'd be really fun. And I don't no idea how it's gonna do, how my audience <laughs> yeah, yeah. Will respond, but I think it'll do pretty good. Totally, totally. How has the Charlie Woods collab been coming? I know that's something you've been kind of teasing since the beginning. Has Taylor made like given you any inklings of like being able to hook up with like maybe not him, but like other Taylor made athletes and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think with those, you know, with Tiger and Rory and the big guys, it's they they have said it, it's gonna be it's gonna be tougher to get them, but it's not off the table and coming up in like a few months, we're supposedly going to be with them all. Um, so yeah, that, that could be really cool. Um, Charlie's Charlie's awesome. I've been able to hang out with him a little bit. He's a really cool kid. Yeah. He's awesome. Um, here in Jupiter, but yeah, I mean, it, it's like with those guys they are just so their schedules are so busy and like, you know, they're, they're not like thinking about how they can grow their social media, you know? <laughs> It's like they either know it or they don't. There's some people out there I feel like that pay attention to it. Yeah. Like Max Homa. There's yeah. some that are like really into the social media and others that just like no. care less. Yeah. Well, the TaylorMade hookup is cool because like Foreplay, they've been doing the TaylorMade Media Days for a couple of years and they've gotten such cool videos with like Rory and Scotty Scheffler and like they're very, I don't know they're more produced than a normal YouTube video. Like, it's not like they're going out there and playing nine holes with them, but they're still getting to do something, like some form of a collab with them, which I think is like, you know, at the very least, it's just a cool introduction because I feel like those guys outside of foreplay stuff haven't really stepped into the YouTube golf ecosystem too much, you know? So it'd be a really cool opportunity to kind of get to collaborate with them in any sense, I'm sure. Yeah, like I've watched a lot of that foreplay content um and i've seen they they've got a bunch of the guys so hopefully this year like in these next few months we can do the same thing i feel like for me i i what i love more than anything is just being able to like play nine holes like a nine hole match with one of the guys and interview them like to me that's that's where i'm the most comfortable sitting in a cart just playing a straight up match not i'm not good with all like the one club challenges and all that stuff so um that's just more my down my alley it's just the straight up nine hole match between like hopefully me and scotty me and yeah. rory whatever oh, that'd be so out. cool that would be i so do cool. i also want to I, I was i really do want to collab with the foreplay guys too i was just yeah. thinking about that. i want to message Riggs or frankie or one of them yeah dude they need they bit. need to cross over more into like like this side of the youtube golf world you know what i mean like they're huge and they're this massive entity but like and they do well on youtube but it's almost like spitting chiclets in barstool like they're it feels like they're kind of in their own universe sometimes you know and there hasn't been mm -hmm. enough crossover with art but there's no reason not to like they're so entertaining they're so good they obviously have a youtube presence so like i would love to see exactly like a four play crossover like half of them at a youtube championships or something like that you know like i feel like that'd be really really cool to see yeah they have they have a really solid like following and production their, their mm -hmm. production their production really good in their videos Crazy. whoever's editing them is, is doing a really good job i'm like yeah. I'm impressed every time i see one yeah, yeah yeah no it's really awesome talk to me about so the tailor made thing has been going obviously for a few months now how has that been like having like a not just a club sponsor but it really like feels like a relationship with a brand you know from being able to go and get trotty to fit you for irons whenever you want like that must just be incredible in and of itself you know go to the kingdom oh, yeah. all that kind of stuff yeah no it's been awesome taylor made it's such a cool brand and like to me their marketing their you know everything they do is just like is really sweet so 
Um, yeah, Trotty, I'm actually heading back in like a week to go back to the kingdom. Um, you're going to do another little video with Trotty at the kingdom. I got some, some surprises for, um, a couple things. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I mean, working with the team has been awesome, especially like doing like the giveaways and, and just having access to all the cool tailor-made stuff they do has been, has been awesome. And like, like I said, I'm looking forward to working with the players more when those like, cause they get like media days and they get those service days where they're like required to show up. And that's kind of when you get the time with the, with the pros. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How was, busy. yeah. How was the like content side of like, like, we haven't really talked since you first announced, like we talked maybe a month after you first announced the TaylorMade and all that kind of stuff. Actually, it was before I think you announced the TaylorMade stuff we talked. I think it was like yeah, a month probably. after, yeah, a month after the Good Good stuff before the TaylorMade stuff. So I haven't talked to you since then. So like, how was that? That whole period must have just been like a whirlwind of like so much opportunity, but also trying to like figure things out. Kind of not for the first time because you had the channel before, but your life probably just looked and felt so different. Like, talk me through kind of January to now and how it's been and kind of the development. Yeah, um, so, I mean, signing the whole announcement with TaylorMade was pretty wild. Um, I mean, yeah, it was it was very 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 intense and pretty stressful time. And like, it's just like at every you have everyone interpreting it in different ways, but. Um, yeah, I mean, since then, it's like, you know, back's kind of against the wall. It's like, what are you going to do now that you have this? Like, what are you going to do from a content perspective? So there's just like a lot of, in my mind, I'm like, just not pressure, but I, I really knew that like, I got to do something with the channel and just upping the production and getting different people to come on. It was kind of like my biggest goal. And yeah, I mean, from, from looking back from, when I signed with TaylorMade to now, I'm, I'm actually very happy with the way the channel's gone. And it's like, you always have things you're looking forward to as well. And, and I really, you know, starting that 2v2 series with George, um, I felt like people really responded. Every video I do with George, there's like a really good fan response and super good engagement. And I haven't got that like really good fan response in a while. So it's like, that's, that's something we're gonna really start hammering out. Yeah, dude, those those videos match so well. You guys are so good together. It's like watching like puppies play golf. Like it's just like the happiest, joyfulest experience ever. It's like it's George wonderful. Is the man, yeah. George is, he, and he's doing great right now. Like Brian yeah. Rose is, they're crushing it. So dude, they're on an uptick um, for sure. Yeah, people love love George and like that he made I'm not even kidding, he's one of the nicest people. Mm -hmm. Like I've never heard him say anything mean about anyone. Like no, yeah. such a genuine guy, like just just a great guy to be around. Yeah. Yeah. Your channel, I yeah, you've probably never dove I mean maybe you have, but your channel right now, using the analytics of I think it's like the last twenty four months, you're projected to be the largest independent creator on the platform or like in the youtube golf ecosystem in five years other than rick shields how's that sound <laughs> that sounds good yeah I mean, <laughs> you know i i like everyone to do well i mean I, I feel like you know everyone doing well helps it just raises everyone up um but yeah i just i hope i hope so you know i'm i am like i do really put a lot of effort into it and it's something where there's a lot of like stuff that goes on behind the scenes um, that I've really worked hard on. Just like <laughs> just spending time with Skylar has been a huge one and just really working hard on the channel. So it's cool to see that. And it's, it's, or it's actually pretty humbling. So I like, yeah, it a lot. yeah, yeah. It's, I just punched into social blade the other day and kind of was just like looking at the analytics for a video and like, it was crazy. You were just on this like, beep, 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 like just going up, and yeah, five years from now, I said you're gonna have over a hundred, one point six million subscribers. So like, I mean, obviously that predictions they don't really mean much, but it's cool to see you're trending in like the I think like the fastest like overall percentage uptick of any independent channel. So you're doing really good. Social Blade. That's I think I've looked at that. I think I've looked at that a couple times. Like months ago but i i never knew how to really read it i'm not into like the whole graphs and stuff like that so that's cool like that's i do like the numbers but i've never looked at really that um platform too much but that that's awesome to hear 
Yeah, I mean, cool. it's all projections. Like, obviously, it's it's impossible to know the future. But if you basically like keep doing what you're doing, that's kind of where it has you going based off your recent growth. And it, your recent growth has been insane, man. Like to see the channel just keep gaining subscribers, keep ticking up. Like it really does feel like you've just been on this uplift. Where, like, I don't know. I feel like you could have gone one or two ways. One of two ways after you know going out on your own and getting all these endorsement deals. Like, it almost feels like you could have. I don't want to say gotten soft, but gotten complacent almost. You know what I mean? But like by the sounds of it, you did the exact opposite. You felt the pressure and not bad pressure, but you know, like you wanted to not let your audience down. You wanted to show them that all this was kind of worth it. And so you've put the work in and you've done the opposite thing. You've just gone up, up and up, you know? Yeah. I mean, I just feel like social media is a wild career because you're either growing or you're like, there's only really two options. Like, you're either on the, the, the up train or you're kind of not, it's just, there's only, it's just crazy. You're either bringing out content that, you know, people are getting excited about, they're ready for the next video, or they're just kind of losing interest. So very touchy. You got to keep, you really got to keep them on their toes, got to keep it rolling. And that's where the planning and, you know, also like my managers really help out a lot um, with planning out content for the future and getting those next big collabs and bringing cool people on the channel because to me that's the most fun that i have is is bringing people on like pros especially um and I, people that i know my fans are gonna like yeah, yeah yeah you talked a little bit about like fan reaction with the george stuff but like i mean i feel like we'd be amiss to talk about it like not talk about it but like you know over the last six to eight months how has the like audience interaction been how was you know i don't want to say the fallout but like obviously there was a little bit of a, a trail that followed you past you know leaving the good good and going on your own but like again i feel like now you're in a place where it's very much kind of in my perspective you're you're in a great place all the comments are super positive it's all super supportive and everyone's kind of like watching you rise now but was there kind of a period where you were like oh this is like tougher than expected maybe or I mean, yeah, uh, you know, leaving good, good, um, reading some of those DMs was tough. It was pretty wild for like, especially like, you know, even like months after it, it was crazy. Um, uh, cause like no matter who you are, it's like you, you read that stuff and you see it and you're human. So it, it's, there's always a little bit of it that you like, that kind of sticks in your brain. It's just, yeah, I mean, it was, it was not fun. I think. Um, it took a lot of growing. It took a lot of just like believing in your mission and, and where you're going with your channel and your life. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy with the way everything's turned out. I can't really complain. And I think, um, like anyone that did say negative stuff, like i never really got that in person, you know, it's like, I love meeting fans. And I think, I think I've had like one person, it was like a bunch of young kids at a golf tournament, like come running up, like what happened with good, good. And like, like six year olds, but that was like the only time that that's ever happened. I feel like it's all, on, it's all on the internet. It's more intensified versus in real life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you go look at like four place comment section on like a daily nine from Riggs and it's like 200 comments being like rig sucks i hate rigs take this down i hate rigs duh and then like he's like i've gotten like one bad interaction in my life in real life like it's all love when you meet people in real life you know what i mean like internet's yeah. very skewed anyone who comments on negative is just a miserable person you know yeah yeah for sure <laughs> yeah I, it's wild it's wild reading and everything but you know i, I love it <laughs> yeah it's part of the game you know it's part of the game it is. what has been the biggest like learning that has occurred over the last like six to eight months would you say of like going now out fully on your own kind of having all the weight on your shoulders you obviously have people who rely on you on your team and all that like you hear artists and, and creatives talk about that all the time how like you know that you can kind of feel that pressure and on youtube it's like yeah you're right you get a 10 out of 10 video and you're kind of like oh no like what you know what i mean like that can definitely weigh on you like have you what's been the biggest kind of learnings that have happened over this time now yeah. Um, I would say just like having no one to really rely on, um, kind of just like back against the wall, you know, like we talked about, um, it kind of makes you do stuff to change, to get better, to really focus on what your audience wants. Um, I just feel like, yeah, that, that maybe that little bit of pressure 
helps. I feel like it really just makes you change and get better and start investing into your, to your channel to make it better instead of just, you know, going out with one camera angle, no tracers. It's like, it's like now it's, it's more people get, they want two camera angles. They want tracers on almost every shot. They want green angles. They're, they just, it's just like the YouTube golf in general has just progressed. And now it's, it's just, you know, I feel like cause good gets production was there's no one like it. And it's the best. Like even to this day, I'm like the, the, the intros that I remember watching the old good, good intros. And like, even the intros now it's just Colin and Max are so, so good. And I used to get so hype at like oh, back in the good talk great. too. I remember getting so excited when those intros yeah. launched. I feel like jumping on the set. It was crazy. <laughs> they were so good. They were, yeah, they were, man. They were amazing. Yeah, dude, watching the Good Good Championships back, like from being there and getting to like watch the tournament unfold and just be like, okay, so I just watched nine hours of golf with 63 people and you filmed everything. How the heck are you going to make a YouTube video? And I was asking them, like Colin and Max, I was like, what are your plans? Like, how are you planning on doing this? Like, that is the most overwhelming thought I've ever had. Because like when I edit my videos, I might have one or two video tracks one or two audio tracks and you know what i mean it's like it's straightforward it's all chronological it's like easy these guys <laughs> have like 47 different cameras Dude, i don't even i would not even want to know what went into that like i sleepless nights like stress trying to organize it all like that is that's about as tent as intense as you could make a, a youtube golf video just because there's so, there's so much to cover and to keep it interesting is so difficult because there's so many players it's just man my brain like like respect to colin and max for just for putting that time and i know probably Ryder was a part of it i don't know who else was a part of it because there's a lot of people that are also help out too so um oh my gosh like i couldn't even mentally go there yeah even what do you think about like the YouTube golf space kind of moving past just like traditional YouTube videos and like good, good hosting a pro tournament, like Rick talking about kind of wanting to host this like big all encompassing thing that's like going to be different than just a base collaboration between channels. Like, do you think that's like a positive thing that or uh, it's obviously positive, I guess, but do you like that, that kind of movement and shift do you or how do you think it's going to affect the community? I think it's, I think it's really good if you know, you keep the creators together. Um, what I think, and I also think the Giga Championship was was a great idea, getting, you know, giving these these minor league guys or, or people that lost their card or whatever stage they're at um, a chance to make money and all their expenses paid for. It was like, it's super nice of them to even do. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I, like I said, I think it's, if you're keeping the YouTube community together and, people that all have their different audiences and you're bringing them together. I think that's the most powerful thing because, you know, like it's hard to really make a, a good golf YouTube golf video with, with people that no one knows. Um, I feel like you build your audience and you have people that want to follow you and know your story. So that's why they come in to watch the videos. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think especially with like Rick and good, good with, hosting their own tournaments and all that. Like you need your, you need those resources that they both have to put on these big events or you need sponsors and investors. So, which, you know, it's, it's not going to ever hurt the golf world. I think it's, I think it's awesome. And I don't even know where this, where YouTube golf is going to go. I think right now it's like, it's really, it's booming and I'm, I'm really excited for the future of it. Yeah, dude. I mean, my whole ethos with this channel is like, I'm so enamored by the growth of the YouTube golf community and like to now be able to like be a small part of it and like take people along on just like the evolution of it, whether it be my channel or like the community as a whole, like it's just crazy to see things like that happening. Cause you're right. Like I think a lot of the feedback on the good, good championships, especially the initial was like, well, we don't know who any of these people are. Like it might've been, you know, if, if these were all people we knew, blah, blah, blah. But like, at the same time, it's like, well, it's doing something very different and still yeah. pulling millions of views, you know? So right. it's like, I get that it's like something that's maybe a little different at first, but it's like 
first over the wall is always going to get the messiest. You know what I mean? Like first person doing something completely different is always going to have that. But it's like, that is how we propel this community forward. Because yeah, you're right. Like Golf Galaxy was involved in that. Like all these like bigger golf entities, you know, it was written about in publications. Like it, it does something a little different. And then it allows, it's a trickle down effect. You know what I mean? And it's like, right. oh, more pros see that YouTube golf is like not just this like vanity thing of all these good looking young guys just wanting to hit golf shots on camera. It's like, oh, they actually care about golf. They're growing the game. They're doing, you know what I mean? And it kind of opens you up to, you go get to play Augusta one year or something crazy like that. You know what I mean? Like, so I think yeah. it's really cool for the growth of it. Yeah. I mean, touching on that point, just like with brands, you know, realizing that it could be the next thing where, I mean, they're starting to maybe put their money towards whether it's club companies or, or anything in the golf world. I think that's kind of cool too, because we're all on the forefront of it. Um, and when you have, what I've noticed is when you have, maybe older people that are ahead in, in charge of the marketing, they don't really see YouTube golf as like, they don't understand it. Does it make sense? Or YouTube in general just doesn't make sense. They don't really give it any attention, but it's the people that maybe are younger and are like, they can see the value in it. That They really start to open their eyes and be like, dang, this is, there is some value in YouTube golf. Totally. I know you have like, a, you know, people helping on the business side and all that, but how's it been kind of managing brand opportunities? And I'm sure you have the kitchen sink being thrown at you every week in terms of people wanting to pull you in different directions and hey, come do this or collaborate on this or work with us on this. Like, how's your process been of kind of like sifting through like what's a good opportunity for you and what is one maybe you say no to? Yeah, and that's that goes back to just like, you know, trusting who's around you and they're you know, you know, their opinions too, on what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I have my own opinions, but I also like to always bounce it off of, you know, the people around me to make sure if it's in line with our brand and what we're doing. Um, and I feel like that just goes back to like, you know, I'm really close with my managers and I, I talk with them a lot. So I feel like that's what, you know, just being, having a really close relationship and, and them working hard on your brand is also a huge thing. Like they're, they're focused. I feel like with any brand that's growing, you need to have a team that's focused on your brand and, and really working hard. Um, and, and they've been there for me. So it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's been awesome to watch. I'll let you go. We've almost been on here for an hour now, so I don't want to keep you any longer, but I appreciate you coming on. It's been so cool to watch your evolution over these last couple months. And we're definitely going to have to check back in again in 2024. And just the, once you're already blowing the ceiling even higher, it'll be great to, to see where you're at again. Yeah, dude. Thanks. Thanks, Nate, for having me on and, and keep killing it, dude. It's, I, I watch the video, so I, you always get me. You, know, you always get me on the, the clicks. I mean, I'm like, whoa, what is he talking about now? You always Good. get me. Uh, Good. Um, yeah, just keep killing it, man. And I'll be, I'll be excited to, to come back at a later time. 